I'm Sen. And I'm Pyrosin. And welcome to Nerd Talk. Um, you know, we're just kind of in a new free mood today, I guess. We've got new cameras, new equipment, new games. Oh my Mostly god, we're actually we reviewing a game. I didn't lose it. We, we are without possession of the old equipment temporarily. God, I'm like, everything's all my fault, white OTGs. Yup. This is so, a thing. After, like, months of not having anything, we have two movies and a video game today. And the video game is like a $60 boxed AAA title. Right? We have done so much reviewing for this show. It's so cool. Okay, then. Now, chat folks, do we have any? Chatting folks. So, hello and welcome to Underscores and Tall and whoever wacky, that's a new one. So, hello. It's nice to see all of you. Yay, people. New and old. Well, old's not there, but... Not uh, quite here yet. Newcomers and regulars alike. Hello. Uh, so, Chronicles. Is... How was it? Okay. I hear it was good. Chronicle. Chronicle, I... I actually really enjoyed Chronicle, and I, it wasn't what I was expecting. Like, I went into it with a certain expectation of basically what live-action Dragon Ball Z should have been, and it, it ended up being, I guess, more to me than that. And I don't know how much we want to talk about without spoiling stuff, because I really want to encourage people to go see it, and I don't want to ruin things. So so we want to do a spoiler-free? If, if, if we can. The official trailer indicates that one of the dudes turns pretty evil. So, there's that. Yeah. That's right yeah. up front on the poster and stuff. I guess. Okay, so I think the best way we can describe Chronicle is that it is a found footage film in which teenagers find a relic in the ground of some sort, and it ends up giving them telekinetic powers. So you have teenagers with superpowers and possibly the best mechanic in found footage uh, film history. Because he is telekinetically holding the camera and so you get those great sweeping shots and stuff. Yep. It's great. So traditionally the found footage genre is known for shaky cameras, bad camera angles, and the inability to actually focus on on the main action scene. It's effectively a cheap method of making a film because really awesome special effects, you don't have to focus on those. You can just have the camera pointing in another direction because if someone's running for their lives, they're not going to be turned around watching the really cool action scene that they're running away from. Right? Which fits with the fiction, I mean. There's, there's usually not people who are skilled at cinematography taking part in the action of found footage movies. Yep. Except this time, one of the one of the guys who's a superhero is also a camera like nerd. an aspiring documentarian. No, yep. he's just a camera nerd. Yeah, yeah <laughs> he totally is just into this is my he's camera. Just, it will he's film just, everything. I bought a camera and I am going to film everything that happens to me from now on. That's actually um, one of his lines. A man after my own heart. I know, right? I saw that and I was like, oh man, Pyro's gonna love that. He's not filming it for any particular reason. It's not for a project. It's just, oh, I want to film everything now. And so he's carrying it with him everywhere. Like, as soon as he brought it to the high school, I was like, no high school would ever allow this. But, you know, whatever. Especially disbelief and whatnot. And, uh, yeah, that's so, that, that, that part was, that part was mildly amusing. Yeah. So one of the hallmarks of this found footage genre that I've also found is that the main characters are the most unlikable douchebags on Earth. Mm -hmm. And at the start of this movie, that, it really felt like that was going to be the case. Because they're high school, you know, teenage boys, I mean. Yeah. Not super and, really and, and a good portion of the scenes of this movie, when boys. they're discovering their powers, are them being stupid teenagers. So, like... There's no I'm Uncle gonna... Ben in this movie to tell them with great power comes no. great responsibility. No, they're just all on their own with this. And so... It's, they're doing stupid things. They're messing with people in, like, shopping centers. Yeah, they... Hilarious, by the way. They, so they practice are... their superpowers when they can only move, like, say, 15 to 20 pounds by going into a toy store and just messing with people. And scaring the crap out of small children. Yeah. By they... making, like, the, the toys float and chase after them. Moving people shopping carts. Uh, it was, it was, oh, they were playing with Legos with them. It's, yeah. 
you get this really interesting power progression as the boys learn to control and, uh, and use and, their abilities. And as they get better and better at it, one of them decides to move someone's car into a different parking space and then stand there laughing when she's all like, what, but I thought it parked over here. <laughs> Yeah, the woman freaks out, and the guys just stand there laughing. So, effectively, part of the movie is jackass with telekinetic powers. Which also sounds awesome, am I right? Yeah, so, like, there's this great scene where they're sitting in a cafe, and one of them is holding a fork, and they're like, you're gonna do it. Come on, do it. We gotta film this. Come on, just do it. Do it. And you think they're gonna, like, do the the, the knife thing from Aliens, you know, stab between the fingers? No, just into the hand as hard as he can, because they apparently had developed the telekinetic power to shield themselves from damage. And so what they <laughs> did was, the one kid went to stab the other kid's hand, and the, the, the person being stabbed was supposed to, while they were practicing this, throw up a telekinetic barrier at the last second... And what ended up happening was the fork would bounce off or break. Yeah. And so it was really cool. Also, watching Legos, like, float around in midair and put themselves together, also really cool. Yeah, it, it's surprisingly enjoyable so to watch. So fun to watch. It, it's the simplest special effects, too. Like, the the first use of their powers that you see, they're throwing baseballs at each other and stopping them in midair, which leads to some no, great... One of them threw a vase. <laughs> oh, yeah. Leads to some, some great comedy of just, like, dude gets hit in face with baseball. Ha ha, funny. <laughs> <laughs> they, they replay that joke like three times before one of them gets it. And, and walking into this movie especially, the thing that I really didn't understand is, why is this on the mega screen? Like, yeah, like this is a found footage film that didn't look all that impressive with special effects from the trailer. Why is this on the biggest screen the theater has to offer? Turns out the flying scenes are really, really cool. Oh, by the way, they can fly. It's yeah. freaking cool. The, the scenes where he takes the camera up with them during like a lightning storm, and you like he's like filming during the. Which, by the way, sounds like an awful idea. But... Yeah, the scenes when they're like, just they're, racing they're... through the sky are incredibly. Or they'll be cool. up there playing football with each other in the clouds. And, and a plane flies right there. through their field. It's so freaking cool, guys. Oh my yeah, gosh. Yeah, the special effects were just. Very very well done. And they're all very simple, too. Like, the the big special effects sequence is at the very end of the movie when you have, like, this Akira-style battle through the middle of downtown Seattle. And that's the peak of the special effects. And it's, it's all very simple and believable, but looks so good. I know, you right after we saw it, you were kind of nitpicking at it a little bit, but I was I was like I'm so impressed, and I didn't even have like a giant coffee beforehand to like <laughs> alter my opinion to help with your mood. <laughs> well, well, the fact that they're telekinetic gives them an excuse to have cinematography and to have it be a found footage film at the same time. You do kind of have to think. Wow, those iPhones have really good cameras. No, he no, got a he, legit camera. He has like you can two, see it in the two mirror. different cameras during the film. And one but, of them and, is and like... In the final battle at the end, he uses... He steals people's iPhones yeah, and for for different angles. The, the, end of, the end of the game... Or, end of the game. End of the movie, how they justify having such amazing shots of this fight is... Yeah, he blows up the glass on the Space Needle and takes everyone's phones and cameras who were filming him at the moment. And so they can do all these, like, grand epic shots from multiple angles of the two characters arguing. It, it's very cool. Like, this is my favorite found footage film now. Because I didn't get sick during it. The thing that kind of turned me off from the trailer was... They, like you said, they all kind of seem to be dicks. I mean, especially the guy who turns bad within the trailer. Yeah, it, why you gotta be a dick, man. If you don't be a if dick. you watch the trailer, you you already know who's gonna go evil, who's the good guy, and who's the dude who's likely to die before the movie's half over. So the characters come from like social strata in a high school, right? Yeah, it's a popular yeah. kid, a loser, and a normal kid. Well, no, it's the normal. It's the school politician type. Yeah, it's the school politician and popular guy, because I think he was on the football team, he's running for class president. It's the... Some guy. The street corner philosopher. Yeah, the, the, the guy who thinks that, you know, because he's, like... Because he's Cliff read Notes one on, ethics book, he's... He's, he's reading Cliff Notes ethics book, so he thinks he's, like, the modern-day Socrates. Yeah. And it's then it's his cousin. 
the the school loser who gets picked on every day. It, it's a very post Columbine movie, really. It, it wants you to be aware that yes, this bullies happen and it's a horrible thing. Like they make it very clear that this is an unacceptable social situation, and they they don't make excuses for why this character ended up losing it because of that. All right. It Tell me which it is, because I don't know. I don't know who is the one that throws the van off the highway. That's it's the it's Andrew, the long-haired one. Uh, but I don't. Which is the social strata? Uh, he is the the lower end of the social strata. He comes from the broken. He's the home. loser. Yeah. I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't use that term. It's, he's very. He's the most talented of the three with his powers. Yeah, he's he's the one who's picked on. He's the one who has the hard the home socially life. awkward one. We'll say. Okay. He has things to get revenge on the world for. Yeah, the moment the the scene where he's sitting there on in front of a car on camera and makes the de declaration that I am the apex predator, you know it's not going to go well. That's he gives the Magneto speech very well. And admit it, it's one viewpoint of I have social powers that's understandable. You know, what? So where the heck do the powers come from? They just show up? They... Like, they, uh... Like puberty? They're at, a, they're at a party, and they wander off, and they're like, Oh my gosh, there's this big hole out here! And it keeps making <laughs> loud noises. So let's go down and investigate! And of course the kid's got... He, they, the popular kid is all like, Hey, you've got a camera, we want you to come and film this. Because we think this uh -huh. is really neat. And yep. so, you know, that the uh, popular guy, Steve, and... Uh, Regular dude Matt and his cousin Andrew end up going down this hole here, and they discover some stuff. Yeah, really. they they never define what this thing is. The movie never tries to. It's it's just a thing. And they interact with it, and then later the tunnel like they 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 leave you know after the fact and the tunnels collapsed. So. Yep. They they claim that the tunnel collapsed during whatever event it was. That gave them their powers. So they never get to go back there, but they're told, Get out of here, you kids! By, I guess it's law enforcement? And I don't know, I wasn't quite sure what that was. And that's how we end up with the second camera, because the first one gets, you know... Which, admitted, the, the second camera is pretty nice. Just, just saying. I, I was a big fan of that second camera compared to the giant one that he was initially carrying. Well, the giant one looked like TV grade. Looked like a legit movie camera. Second one was like a smaller, like slimmer camcorder type. Yep. So yeah, um, the best thing I can, the best compliment that I can give to Chronicle as a film is that it was competent. Really? It, it was clear that it, it the... Was, it wasn't just, like, all the cool psychic powers and the, the writing was solid. There was some really good humor in that. Yeah. There was... Uh, the, the, the characters were all likable, well, with the exception of one where they were so close to having, like, a decent turnaround moment with and them just kind of spit on it. Yeah. And, uh... Despite the fact that they were, they were for the most part, stereotypes, they were well-executed stereotypes. They weren't bad. Um, you weren't taking, you weren't like, oh god, this guy, whenever they came on the screen. And in fact, I really ended up liking the Steve character. I thought he was great. The the popular guy, the politician, he turned out to be really cool. Mm -hmm. Like, he wasn't a pompous jerk. He goes out of his way to help Andrew at one point. Like, by putting him in the talent show, encouraging him, and being in his act. Mm hmm there are a lot of shitty superhero origin stories out there, and this one both being original and competently executed raises it above the crowd. I, if, if, it was a competent movie overall. I, I, I was kind of emotionally moved by it. Yeah. So there was, there was definitely something of substance there. Be, be it something about, you know, to, to, to be it something... Uh, as you, as you wanted to call it, post-Columbine, that's, you know, kind of a, you know, hey, be careful about how you treat your fellow human beings, or just the, the, the way that you represent yourself in society, or just the pervasiveness of our compulsive need to be posting everything all the time. Yeah, it, Because it, Chronicle 
even though other characters are still looking at Andrew like, that's kind of weird, why is he recording everything? Could you put the camera away? They're doing the same thing. The entire movie is shot and established through recorded media. There is there is um. an in-context, in-narrative reason for there to be a camera at all times. So is the camera guy the guy who turns bad? Do you want us to spoil it? I, 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 I do. Don't. Okay, yes, yes. Um, We're just going to override what I want, I guess. <laughs> I, don't, I think anyone listening to this will still go see it. And if you watch uh, the trailer, you know who the bad one's going to be. They they spoil that in the trailer right away. It, it is it is literally on the poster that you will see as you walk by yeah, scroll, the door to the movie up, theater. You see it. That you that is without a doubt that one is. character defending himself, and it will be clear who the other one is. I think they also do have one poster where it's the shot of the space needle. Let me. Uh, the, uh, there's a poster I've seen that is very clearly. Two fighting the one, and the one is like sinister and looming. Uh, that kind of makes me apprehensive because obviously the characteristic of liking documentary stuff is the one I'd associate with. Mm. Yeah. I, I like associating with the bad guys. As far as a documentary goes, this is really competent. Everything is explained really well as to why these things got I still filmed. think he remains pretty sympathetic. Yeah, without a doubt. The char- You can still understand the motives of this character and why it's come to that. I, I didn't experience a whole lot of othering going on. Mm-hmm. As, as, as the, least from thematically. The one scene in the trailer that really turned me off is that they were driving down some road... And there was a van behind them who wanted them to go faster, and the van was like, honk. And he was like, murder. He didn't. I was like, Jesus, God. One, that guy didn't There's die. There's no sympathy uh, there. I will that say, guy didn't die. He didn't mean to do that. Yeah. That was an accident. There is a lot more to that scene that you missed in the trailers. Such as okay. the other two you characters screaming, that. what are you doing? Why did you do that? We need to help this guy. And... Admit it. In that scene, Andrew doesn't understand what he did wrong because his defense the entire time is, "I didn't mean to do that. I didn't mean to do that. Not. I'm sorry. I hurt this guy." Uh huh. Well, I mean, th- that's very valid. I mean, if it was unintentional, then there's no moral culpability there. But the way the trailer portrayed it is, he like looks at them, he cocks his head to the side, he lifts his hand up. And he does a Jedi mind trick hand wave. That was, okay, that's actually a lot of cutting out from some actual context of the situation. This guy was tailgating them for a while, and, you know, they're all like, hey, we should mess with this guy. And so he goes, oh, well, all right, fine, how about this? And he tries to just push him a little bit, just, just enough to get him to be like, oh, hey, fucking, like, straighten his car back out. He does it too much because, again, he's the strongest of the three and accidentally puts the guy in a ditch. The guy does not die, actually. Steve goes after him and pulls him out of the car. The other one calls the police in an ambulance. And Matt actually ends up having this argument or this conversation with Andrew later where it's like, hey, that was bad. Don't do that. And hey, we need to establish some rules so that, you know, this sort of thing doesn't happen to anybody else. I actually really liked that moral discussion in the film. The idea of who sets the rules when no one is there to enforce them. Who watches The Watchmen? Yeah. Well, that makes me want to see the movie a lot more because the way the trailer presented yeah, it that trailer was, was very droll and I was like, eh, I don't the, the way care that about somebody who's presented, a dick. The way presented, I feel, was misleadingly edited just to get to the interesting bit where we move the car faster, I think. Yeah. Because you're missing a whole lot of all of the other external stimuli around that event. Yeah, I, I remember at watching the trailers for this originally and just thinking... Okay, so it's Jackass Jedi. That That's what Which, I thought. I mean, it was part of the way when they were chasing people with shopping carts, but... <laughs> yeah, but then they quickly learned that, oh, we can do a lot more with this, and we need to start being responsible. Like, the first rule they set is no using powers on people unless Living it's things. to help them. Yeah. Is no the using- thing that I really like about Jackass is that all of the cast members of Jackass... They, they only do it to each other, and all of them have the opportunity to back out. 
Tell the that part- to the people on the, the streets of Japan when Party Boy shows up. <laughs> okay, well, there's that. <laughs> but for the vast majority, they're, they're hurting each other. Yes. Volunteer, they have, and that's what makes it hilarious. They have willingly agreed to do this to themselves. Uh, so, the, the idea of the guy just being a dick kind of turned me off, but it being a more nuanced character sounds interesting. No, to he's, me. he's definitely got some more to him than that. Yeah. Whoopsie, I guess we forgot to turn the phone on silent again. Oops. So, well, you guys saw an interesting movie. I saw a Chronicle, really, guys. really bad one. Chronicle, guys. Go freaking yeah, see it. Chronicle is worth go your money. Go see it. Please go see it. You can listen to us later. Just go right now. Go see it. I saw Haywire, which has a lot of very famous people in it, including Michael Fassbender, who Yay. was Magneto in X-Men First Class, Ewan McGregor, Bill Paxton, Antonio Banderas. I mean, it's Zorro. How can you say no to Zorro? Also, Bill Paxton was in Navy Seals. <laughs> Why do you know that? <laughs> How? How does Navy Seals keep getting into this show? I approve. I want to see Kevin Smith walk out and just go, Poof. Thou shalt not talk about Navy Seals. Hell yeah, thou shalt talk about Navy Seals. Ah, thou shalt talk okay. about Navy Seals I, all I guess day I have long. To, I have to explain how I know Why this Why would now. you know this? <laughs> okay, this is actually kind of a stupid story. <laughs> Since we're going off topic God, on today's Someone actually show. watched Navy Seals. That's the horrible thing. <laughs> the worst part is, no I didn't. I know this because of a stupid comedy skit on X-Play where two characters were talking about this. Uh, I don't remember if it was Bob and somebody else. It was, they were playing Splinter Cell and it was a machinima comedy skit thing where was, they were on co-op and one of them was the straight man and the other guy was incompetent. I know, I know time, how Bob and what's-his-name works. Yeah, and they, they were and they were like you know, they were arguing during the entirety of this mission over whether or not Bill Paxton was in Navy Seals and one of them slices of the paper was like he was totally in it. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's what I remember it from. That's pretty badass. <laughs> I never watched that movie. And, and let us never mention Navy Seals again <laughs> at the end. So Haywire has a whole bunch of really famous and pretty competent actors in it, but then the, the short was called nothing Splitter happens. Cell Co-op Theater, if, if anybody's interested in looking into that. Is that show even still on? X-Play as a thing is still on, but they don't do the skits anymore, I don't think. And it, it is Especially to nothing Bob like it used to be. Steve, and I remember that fondly. X-Play has changed radically from its initial origin by way of corporate meddling. All right. It kind of sucks now. Righto. Moving on. So the, Back to the main star of Haywire is Gina Carano, and she's a fighting star turned actress. She was a big MMA fighter for a long time. And the only two things that happen in Haywire is there's a lot of walking around and a lot of MMA fighting. And it, it goes down just like you'd expect MMA fighting to, which is, you know, uh, two punches and then they're grappling on the ground, chewing on each other's legs for 15 minutes. I don't know, this sounds like it could be potentially enjoyable, so let's just talk about where it goes wrong. Um, well, the plot outline and the elevator pitch is um, Gina Carano is an agent for a private military contractor, and so she's doing somewhat sketchy military work as basically a spy, and then her boss is selling himself out to the highest bidder, as is to be expected, because it's a PMC. That's but the highest doing. bidder ceased to be the United States and English governments, and instead was some terrorist organization. And so... Gina Carano is on a mission to rescue some Spanish writer who's writing about the government, and she thinks she's rescuing him, so she gets him away from the government and puts him in a car and takes him back to his boss, to her boss. And then 
Later, she finds that the guy she rescued turns up dead, and that it is because her boss sold him down the river to the Spanish government, or some Spanish terrorists. And she's like, well, you're a bad guy, so I guess I will fight back against you. And eventually she murders him, and the person who paid for him to do that, and everybody else. And now, that pitch sounds really, really great. I mean, that seems legit to me. I'm intrigued. Michael Fassbender, Ewan McGregor, the born identity with a female lead. How could we go wrong? Except it just basically sucks. <laughs> that it basically the sucks. The elevator pitch is not something you'd be able to deliver if you didn't either know the plot of the movie beforehand or watch it at least the first all but five minutes of it because the movie doesn't tell you what's going on ever. Like, I appreciate when a movie does not explain itself in idiot terms to a five-year-old, but this movie does not even provide clues that you can use to deduce the plot. There's just lots of moody sitting around and punching sometimes, and then at the very end you're like, well, I guess I can deduce what happened, but all of the parts were boring, and I didn't care about any of the characters. That sounds terrible. It's a very slow movie. And Wait. part of the fight scenes is that they always have guns, and often they're trying to kill each other, but they do, like, 25 minutes of MMA fighting. And then after the MMA fight is over, the victor pulls out their gun Pirate and Pirate shoots their enemy in the just face. Just a second. Yeah, go ahead. I would just like to interject the... Since playing with the character creation screen on Soul Calibur, what, is it, what are we on, five now? Yep. And it looks like he's made the angry love child of Zorro and Freddy Krueger. No, no, <laughs> I've done worse. This is a combination of Anne of Green Gables, Freddy Krueger, and Tarek from uh, League of Legends. Is that where the uh, leg warmers come in, the fuzzy leg warmers? Yup. I wish we had a shot of this right now. Yeah, I can... Yeah, pix, take a picture of this and we'll post it for well, the I'm website. just going to move the camera over here. Okay. Be like, hey, look at that. So that's, my, that most, kind of that's my most recent recent creation. He fights like Devil Jin from Tekken, which means he does have eye lasers. And... Let's make sure that's showing up right. Oh, nope. There. Here. You tell me if I'm getting this. There we go. A little closer. A little further down. There you go. All right, so yeah, enjoy so that monstrosity. That's what I made while we were on the air just now. But let's give it a finish edit. Anyway. Save it to a data slot. And now i got to make sure I've got this right. You're good. Okay, that's good. A little, little up. A little bit up. Okay. There. Good. Yep. Done. So yeah, Listen I... Listen to Nerd Talk. Mess with the camera. I, I made that. I, I have to try to fight with this, just just for entertainment's sake. I've, I've been very negative about Haywire, but it's actually not awful. It's yeah. just really slow and boring, and none of the characters are interesting. The fighting is okay, but you'd get more of it if you just watched MMA on TV. Righto. There you go. So, I guess we can go on to our game review, because we've got one of those tonight. And I just made something utterly ridiculous in it, and it's going to beat up, uh, Sophitia's daughter. So, yeah, Soul Calibur V. Most recent release in the Soul Calibur series. And I guess since, um, it's been, what, 17 years since the last game, all of the non-immortal characters have either retired or died, so... There's new versions. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's so good. Not that. Not the scared little girl. That! It plays just like Jin. Okay, so continuing. Um, yeah, Soul Calibur 17 Club. years in universe. Yep. Only four IRL. Yeah. Um, this time, the biggest feature of Soul Cal is always, you know, what crazy crossover are we going to get? And this time's no different. This time we have Ezio... I don't know Ezio's full name. I'm, I'm sure... I'm... Auditori. All right. I thought he had, like, a, a five-syllable name. 
Um, well, yeah, he has a... I'd have to think of his hometown, but there's a day and then his hometown added uh, on. Uh, Firenze, isn't it? Yes, that's it. Ezio Editore de Firenze. Okay. So, yes, Ezio has joined the cast. And unlike all of the, like, recent fighting games, this one does not come with all the characters unlocked. That, that's kind of been a trend lately. This one does not feature that. I can proudly say that, yeah, you actually have to do some work in this one if you want all of your characters. Um, another huge addition to the Soul Calibur franchise is the addition of the critical edge moves, which are kind of like your character's super moves. They all feature some kind of flashy animation. Um, they do a, a good amount of damage. And so by doing these, you can hope to actually even out a fight. I'm going to go ahead and pause it. Um, so that you can stop making button mashing noises? Yeah, mostly. So yeah. Um, now we said that the game takes place 17 years after the original Soul Calibur. And with that having happened, a lot of the characters require replacements. So in place of Zhonghua, you have her daughter. In place of Taki, who is finally retiring after being in every game since the original Soul Edge... Uh, you get her new apprentice, Natsu, the blonde western ninja. Natsu. Don't the, ask us, we didn't think of it. Natsu, the great white ninja. <laughs> Continuing. Uh, in place of Kilik, you have a replacement. Although Kilik is apparently in this game. I'm going to go to the character select menu for this. Um, Kilik is in the game and is the every character. So... This is the character who, like, randomly picks his style at the start of each match. At least I think that's how he works this time. Let's go ahead and select him. Really? I, I thought he had a defined style in yes, previous games. Yes, in previous games he did, but from what I've read, Keelik this time is the every character. Let's see. We're going to load him up here, and he's going to be beaten up here too, because for some reason the game defaults to you beating up a scared little girl. Sort of a strange change narratively. I mean, it sounds interesting mechanically to have a character that has one appearance but different fighting styles because yeah, no, if he's... you're good at the game, then you don't know who you're fighting right against. Right now, I have Kilik wielding Astaroth's axe. I'm gonna, that I'm gonna, sounds impressive. I'm gonna win this round and see if he switches uh, his weapon. Uh, the next interesting thing about the Soul Calibur franchise is always the character creation. Uh, ever since Soul Calibur 3, a big focus has been in these games on creating your own character, either out of unique fighting styles, which I specifically remember Soul Calibur 4 featuring, or by mimicking one of the styles of the characters who's already in the game. The same can be done in Soul Calibur... Oh, now I'm Raphael. The same can be done in Soul Calibur 5... You're using Raphael's sword, rather. ...with the restriction that you only have access to movesets that are in the predefined characters. So for ex um, I'm pretty confident that there are move sets that exist in the character creator that are do not belong to any predefined character. I, I think they might not be unlocked by default. Yeah, I, I've exist. been experimenting with those and have not seen them. In Soul Calibur 4, you could specifically use uh, systems that were just based on a weapon style that no main character held. So while you had two great swords in the form of Siegfried and Nightmare, you had a third style that was the unset version, where it was just whatever you wanted. Uh, I specifically liked that style because I had a, a created character that was built on that. All right, so, con so I, continuing. I played a lot of Soul Calibur II back in the day. I haven't played anything since then, but just... Uh, before the show, when Sen was playing it, the music was playing, and I don't think it was a song that is reused from previous versions, but it had a very distinctive style, yeah. and just hearing it was like, man, I need to play Soul Calibur. I, I will definitely say the audio and graphic quality in this game could not be higher. Those are both exceptional. This game looks beautiful uh, if you're playing on the best settings, which is uh, 720i. It looks fantastic. It sounds really good. All of the music makes you feel epic. It's all very classical. Uh, it feels like like Soul Edge music. That's extremely well done. Character voices, 
not so much. Um, Pix can attest to this one because she was playing or she was here when we were <laughs> playing through the game's story mode. Mm -hmm. Some of that voice acting just isn't there, and I'm th I'm thinking specifically Patroclus's lines. Like every one of them is. Patroclus is just unbearable as a character, and I kind of hate him in every way. Yeah. The, the story mode he's focuses... He's obnoxious and whiny and incompetent and he carries his sword in a stupid pose. Like, his fighting stance leaves his center line completely open. And yeah, his fighting stance is go ahead and stab me in the ribs. Basically, his fighting stance holds his sword way up and behind his head here and his sword way out in front of him here where neither of them are doing him any good. <sighs> yeah, he's wielding a buckler and... Just does not look like he's actually trying to use it at all. And I'm getting worked up over a game. At, at least Pyrrha hides behind her shield when she's not fighting. It's especially dumb for Patroclus to be lacking because he's like the flagship character. He is. Are you forced story. to use him for the story mode? For yes. the majority of the story mode, you will be playing as Patroclus. And I hate him. Yep. This was like when we were playing Mortal Kombat and we were forced to play as. As one of the characters you disliked. Because there was a long list of them. Yeah, I'm thinking of the first one. Johnny Cage? Yes. <laughs> Thankfully, you oh, really... Oh, Johnny Cage. You do only you play... You so dude, bro. You do only play as Johnny Cage once in the story mode for Mortal Kombat. Twice? Twice you're forced to play him? And those, you don't remember that review very well, do you? Those chapters suck. <laughs> More dude, bro, there's, than your body has room remember, for. Remember, there's the first fight where he's in the tournament, and the other oh, no. one where he's... Beating up the female character. No, no, I was talking like you, at least you only have to play as him the, for the one chapter. Ah. Because there, there are characters that you'll play as for multiple chapters in the story mode for Mortal Kombat. Mm -hmm. He is not one of them. He's like, well, first chapter's done. You've beaten up Sonya. You're done with him. I think that was the end of his chapter. Yeah. Yeah, because you have to beat up the two people at the tournament. Um, first, Reptile, and then... I forget who else you fight as Johnny Cage. But then you have to beat up Sonya Blade to prove a point. No, because she wouldn't go out with you. Yeah. <laughs> How offensive. Right? Yeah, it was incredibly offensive, but, but that wasn't what we were talking about today. So. But right, at least today, you only had to do it once. Let's, okay. go, let's go happier. Sometimes. Yeah, but the, the story mode is competent. Like, the scenes are decent. Um, it's a mix between actual rendered in-game engine cutscenes... And these scenes where you've got, like, faded paper and still images with... With some voice acting. Yeah, voice acting it. and music dubbed in. I, it's enjoyable. I, like, I just don't understand why they couldn't have those cutscenes rendered in Engine. I don't understand why they can't let me play as more than the two most insufferable characters in the series. Yeah, that that is disappointing because one of the things... Like, I get that these two are the new characters and so they want to show them off. Because, well, Cassandra and Sophitia aren't exactly around anymore. Uh, Sophitia being dead is kind of a concern. You know, just... The thing that made me play the most Soul Calibur 2 was just my strange affinity for the characters I liked. Which were Cassandra and, um, oh dang, what's his name? The sword guy, Samurai. Mitsurugi. He's, Mitsurugi. He's back for yeah. some reason. Mitsurugi is still alive and kicking somehow. Like, Taki was apparently too old and retired, but Mitsurugi is just like, I'm still gonna go, let me get my walker and my sword. Yeah, because, see, uh, the media has no problem portraying old men, but old women are unattractive. Mitsurugi doesn't even look all that old. Like, let, let's load him up on the start screen. He does not look like an he old man. He looks grizzled. Well, yeah, but he's looked grizzled since the first game. He has not changed. In fact, he's just That's gotten that, I... more muscles. I am confident that this game would have no compunction about using a character that should be old and just having them be young and not That's even what I mean. caring. Uh, like Voldo, who is easily over 200 at this point. Also, well, Voldo's in a gimp point. suit, so you can't tell if he's old. Let's see. Astaroth is without a doubt undead at this point. Um, Tira hasn't aged a day since Soul Calibur uh, 3, where she premiered. Like, not, not a just... day. She looks the same. That's not because they, you know, have prejudices against old women, but that's just because they didn't make any new assets. They're like, uh, let's just use the old models and animations. It's fine. Apparently somewhere uh, along the way I unlocked Ezio. 
Ooh. I definitely did not have him hip, have play. him unlocked earlier today. Um, new character that actually has a really cool mechanic, uh, Viola, who has a crystal ball that levitates next to her that can actually be separated from her character model. And so, like Ari in League of Legends? Yeah, she's actually kind of like Ari. Definitely a neat character. Um, Man, we need to play some League after the show. Killick has been replaced by Zyba, who plays exactly like Killick. There's no difference there. Hilda, who was kind of like the extra character in Soul Calibur 4, has actually somehow become a full character. Like, she's on the, on the main screen now. Apparently people liked Hilda, her spear and dagger style. Ezio kind of doesn't look right in Soul Calibur 5. His model is not nearly the same as it is in the Assassin's Creed series. Well, His face see. is all... Let's load him up. <laughs> misshapen. He has a weird face in Soul Calibur. I think we'll get a close-up here. Alright, so we're showing us the level. We're on the, the infamous raft. Yeah, that doesn't quite look right. Also, I'm... Okay, here's by far one of my favorite features of playing Soul Calibur V. The, if you're playing the offline, just random battle mode, it, it spawns whatever it wants as the enemy character. And so you will see some of the absolute weird characters ever. Like right, right, right now, he is fighting a I'm black man dressed as a a Russian. Guy. He's yeah, he's like a Russian military member. He's wearing a red beret and like green striped jumpsuit. And I'll definitely say Ezio's like fighting style is spot on. He's using every weapon to the best of his abilities. Too bad you still got knocked the hell out. <laughs> yeah, I'm playing on difficult right now. That that guy's rank is B3, whereas I am in E5. Ezio makes a lot of sense for the Soul oh, Calibur no, he, series. He totally belongs I mean, his, here. his weapons and power level are compatible with the people he's fighting against. Yeah, it's not like we've the, got a ton the, of superhumans here. The disconnect with the Sith Apprentice was that. I mean, it happens a lot in media that lightsabers do not cut through everything the way they should, but in Soul Calibur, it's like the Sith Apprentice, I have a lightsaber, you have a sword, I win in one stroke. Except it, it wasn't like that. Yeah, no, I'm still just remembering uh, playing Soul Calibur 4 and going, oh crap, it's the Sith Apprentice, I'm just done. There's nothing I can do here. <laughs> The Sith Apprentice was OP, but he was not as OP as he should have been when his lightsaber should cut through all shields and swords. And people. And one hit kill everybody. Right? You have been sawed in half the end. Oh, well, people do seem to be pretty durable in Soul right? Calibur because every character has a move that is I stick my sword through your belly and remove it through the top of your head, and that takes off, you know, only a quarter of your health. Right? Like right now I'm playing as Tira. Who, by far, That's should the hoop of death. yeah. Who should be like lacerating entire limbs off every time she attacks, including her own, mind you. I don't know. She's ripping it from. Is the she inside. still rocking the underboob? Not really. What was that, Pyro? She was. Like, I said, is no, she still rocking I'm not the underboob? Because my PC apparently decided to shut down. Her model in two there was like now I can hear she you. wore a shirt that was cut off right beneath her chest. I was like, yeah, you're covered on the top, but from underneath, not at all. Yeah, Tara's new outfit's kind of dumb. Um, actually, one of the features we were discussing... Oh, her old outfit was really dumb, so it can't be much dumber. Yeah, see, like, this... Yeah, I don't that's, know if you remember. Tira is now, in fact, wearing less. Because in Soul Calibur, your fighting potential is entirely relevant to how much clothing you're wearing. It is inversely proportional to how much clothing you are wearing. You know what she reminds me of? Huh. Harley from the Arkham City series. Yeah, I can see that. From, like, the new Batman games. Actually, how does that work with the, um, barely dressed female characters and the fact that the game has an armor destruction mechanic? Oh, no, it, it's... Where you're more vulnerable to it damage. It still destroys their armor. Um, so, for instance, so uh, Natsu, who is already not wearing much. I mean, she's wearing a skin-tight leather, or not leather, a skin-tight one-piece suit 
It's it's more like a like With, spandex leotard type thing. Yeah, without leggings. It's like basically, yeah, just like it it cuts off where it would be like booty shorts almost, like yeah. booty shorts, and then she's got like it's just very like form fitting into long sleeves. Whereas Taki yeah. wore a similar red skin tight cat suit. But that was covering everything. Yeah, Taki's was head to toe. Apparently, Natsu is content to let her legs go free. Um, and when Natsu takes damage, she will lose the uh, various guards that are on her. Like so she's she'll got, like shoulder guards and like a skirt like yeah thing. Her her and skirt ar- her armored skirt and her shoulder guards will break. Um, Ivy will specifically lose her uh, arm guards. Wonder Woman style. She's like, as long as I have these these bracelets, I'm protected. Uh, Zwei I will lose his with my shirt bracelets. that I've seen. I've seen Zwei's entire shirt just explode off of him, which Not is there's much there. Which is funny because if something actually did damage to remove that shirt, it would most likely sever his entire torso. That shirt isn't being held out with much as it is. Yeah, right. Um, I've seen Raphael I've seen lose his hat. Let's see. Did either of you see the um, <coughs> CG animated shorts, the Animatrix? Yes, I have. I didn't. Do you recall the scene in that where in their sword fighting with blindfolds, except their sword fighting so there's, precisely there's swords, that they only cut yeah, each other's clothes off? Yeah, I've seen that scene. It's it's exactly like that, except except this is like brutal. The sword goes all the way through your yeah, body. Yeah, this is people and rips brutally out the top damaging each other with whatever weapons they happen to have available. And only your clothes come off. Right. I I mean I I do like the effect that yeah there's it lowers your ability to take damage. That's that's cool. As a game design perspective, that kind of seems like perverse incentives because that means if you're doing well in the fight, your opponent won't have armor and then they'll just do even worse. So there's that minimizes coming back from behind. Yeah, there's no question that Soul Calibur is a brutal fighting game. It is not uh, beginner-friendly by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, the game pretty much has a prerequisite that you are a Soul Calibur fan in order to do well in this. Uh, Viola, for example, if you take a hit, your orb disconnects from you, which gives you a chance to do a little more damage as the orb tries to come back. But, like, while you're not in possession of it, you are much weaker. Uh, Vol- Holy crap. Voldo in general... Tiara's English voice actor is Jennifer Hale? Yeah. It's Commander Shepard. Which explains why she has some of the best voice acting lines in the story mode. I I love every character's style, but Soul Calibur is not a casual fighting game. You will not enjoy yourself if this is like the, yeah, I'm going to pick this up every couple weeks and play a match or two online. You'll lose. There's no question. To be good at Soul Calibur... You need to practice this game a lot. So they upped the default match division to best three of five instead of best two of yep. three. Mm-hmm. Yep, you are defaulting to three out of five matches. And that is what the standard online mode is as well. Long, grueling, painful fights. Not really, because the fights, is if you're playing one of the heavy-hitting characters, are still ridiculously fast. Like, if you're playing as a, a good uh, Siegfried or Nightmare, or even worse, if you're playing as, uh, uh, I'm trying to remember his name, the dude with the axe. Dylan, dude with the axe. Astaroth. Astaroth? Yeah, if you're playing as Astaroth, you can end a fight in four hits. Like, your average match in Soul Calibur should only be about 20 seconds long. Which you'd think, an, a- which you'd I- think an average fight with a weapon would be shockingly less. You were mentioning earlier that you were annoyed by the um, narrator who says generic, lofty lines at the start of the fight in a deep voice. I have, I have found that the narrator's lines are not random or completely uh, uninvolved if you're playing the story mode. Well, that makes sense. Yeah, at that point, but they actually, have something to do with it. Oh, I burst off that guy's top and his pants. Watch this. And the final swing does it. Boom! Lost his pants. Is there full frontal male nudity in this no, game? No, every character has a minimal amount of underwear. 
damn it. Well, then I'm not buying it. <laughs> that would have sold me. No, there's no nudity of either variety in this. I was gonna say, I like I like the narrator who says really dumb but lofty shit. Yeah. A tale of swords and souls eternally retold. Because <laughs> while it is really dumb, it's kind of sincere, and I'm like, sure, I'll, I'll buy your dumb sincerity and romanticism. Yeah, if... I was gonna say, in violation of my own principle that I like you being unnecessarily serious and sincere. I want Astaroth to have a finishing line of I'm sorry, can I ask ask you another question? <laughs> I it would be nice if you could program in some lines for your characters like you could pick between like a set of 100 of them. Okay. Um what? I am reading a wiki entry on Jennifer Hale. Did you know that she was the voice of Miss Keen in the Powerpuff Girls? No, but I do now. Really? You know it, you can't unknow it. And Once again, Lauren Princess Faust Warbucks. prevails. That's a thing? In the Powerpuff Girls, yes. I d didn't watch the Powerpuff Girls. Sad for you. Uh, she was... Jennifer, eh? She was uh, also Billy's mom. Okay, so I, I guess it's family. time to, to unleash our... Final recommendation slash non-recommendation of Soul Calibur. Um, if you liked the previous Soul Calibur games, you will like 5. It is more of the same game. It is Soul Calibur 4 plus, with a less stupid uh, guest character. If you are not into fighting games, Soul Calibur, not really for you. There, There is no doubt that this is a serious fighting franchise with... All kinds of research required to actually be decently good at this game. Man, she was in, like, basically everything I liked to watch as a kid. The Spider-Man animated series, this could Black be, Cat. This could explain why you have such a thing for Femshep. Femshep is awesome, and I will fight anybody who says otherwise. Oh, I, I like my dude Shep. She was basically in everything I liked. <laughs> I'm seeing like, her no as joke. four different voices in Ben 10. Yeah, but some of these are one-off characters. Oh, cool. She's in the X-Men anime. All right. Oh, man. All right, then. I was looking to see if the Soul Calibur V soundtrack was available for purchase, and it is, but it's super expensive. I was going to say, my recommendation for even if you don't like Soul Calibur games is to buy the soundtrack, because this is a game soundtrack that is probably really good without any context for the yeah, game. Yeah, it's sufficiently it's, epic. It is very fun to listen to. JRPG soundtracks are usually awesome, but they work best in context of the game. This one you could just listen to while you're studying and stuff. I know, if you get tired of the uh, Star Wars music in The Old Republic, you could easily put this on and feel just as epic. I don't know, when I get tired of the Old Republic stuff, I throw on some other... When I get tired of the Old Republic music, I stop playing the Old Republic. That's the sign that it's time for a break. Oh, wait, I did damage to Tira. Let's see what broke. Uh, Tira has lost her armor and is down to fighting in... In her underwear. And a corset. Some panties and a corset. And her boots. I really feel like it would be more sincere if they just put full frontal nudity in these games. Yes, but then you I earn mean, the adults-only rank for naked people beating each other up. Yeah. I guess. It's fine when they murder each other, but not fine when they're naked. Right? Considering you can totally edit the graphics on your character to look like there is blood flying off of every one of your hits. Because during the character creation screen, you have the ability to basically figure out what your visual effect is for impacts, like, so the kapow, if they look like magical strikes or whatever. So yeah, Soul Calibur V. Not for beginners, but if you like Soul Calibur, this is an excellent continuation of the series. She was also Phoenix in so Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Sweet. She's played Phoenix several times, it seems. Alright, so, next week. Matt, nope. I, I want to talk some okay. more. I played a lot more Fortune Summoners since last week, and it is really, really, really good. I was skeptical about the fighting system when I was talking about it last week, but I found my groove, and 
It is Bala. Uh, Pyro got I think you probably personally should buy it, Sen. Sweet. Because when did you hop on board with Final Fantasies, and which have you played? Um, I have played every Final Fantasy game, actually. Every single one? I have played every... Did you play Tactics Advance? Yes, I did. I, I liked Tactics Advance. I like Tactics Advance, now, too. The I don't the real think it was quite as good is, as Tactics, what Final but... Fantasies have I finished? And that is a specifically shorter list. I actually have the exact same answer, because... It, I started playing Final Fantasy at number 7, which is pretty common, but I had a scratch on my third disc that made it so that I could not play the game past Diamond Weapon, or whichever was the one that starts attacking Midgar. I was like, well, I, I can beat this boss fight, but then the game just crashes. But it's like 95% through the game. There's not much left, so whatever. <laughs> and then... With, with Final Fantasy VIII, I got to the scene where you have the airship. It's always right after you have the airship and you get the full open world. Then I'm like, do I want to go start the final sequence where I can't come back to the open world? And I'm like, nah. Nah, why, why would I just never want to finish do that? any of them? No. Anyway, um. Okay, so continue. Fortune Summoners yeah. is very legit. It is. It has all of the trappings of an old Final Fantasy game, and particularly Chrono Trigger. The, the thing that I was thinking about in Chrono Trigger is, I assume, Pixie, you got stuck on the part in Chrono Trigger where you have to go find the shrine that is to the west of the castle, and nobody tells you to do it. I, 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 I assume think that you got is where she concluded because... her play. Uh, I, I had, well, that, that I was pretty played, early. She got past that. I had played to the point where... Do you... Yeah, I was at the part where you'd, like, talk to the old dude and you were, like, able to go to, like, different areas. For oh, so, no. She got oh, to yeah. the future. Uh, that's that's significantly I picked, further. I picked up but... the cave woman chick. I, I, I wow, yeah. Fine. You got su sufficiently further than I gave you credit for. Wow. Yeah, I played the stupid game! <laughs> <laughs> Right, I, and I knew you had played the whole game, but I assume you had trouble advancing uh, yes, at the part where you have to go. Hard, yes, <laughs> because nobody tells you where to go. Yeah, yeah. and that—that that is actually something that happens in Fortune Summoners in a way that it's still kind of fun because I don't. You have to just talk to. Why you have this like fixation on things that are hard and enjoying them? <laughs> it's not quite hard. It's just slow and thoughtful. You have to talk to everybody and think very carefully about the universe in order to know what to do next. And sometimes it is bullshit, but there's still a sensation of victory when you're like, well, there's sort of a puzzle that, what do I do now? I have to solve this puzzle. And then you solve it by figuring out what obscure bullshit they want you to do to trigger the next sequence. There's... There is the some fact of that, that he's in describing it as obscure bullshit to figure out what to do next makes me not want to do it. Exactly. Or, or like when he's like, you know, I really enjoy podcasts when people are talking about things I don't understand and are completely out of context. I'm like, that sounds like a, d a bad thing. That doesn't sound enjoyable to me. The things in Weird. podcasts I enjoy are not because they are out of context, but because they are not explicitly fleshed out. They're just... It's people talking naturally the way they do to each other, and they're not catering to you to invite them in. You earn your place in that conversation by listening for a while and figuring out who is who and what they're talking I, about. I gotta support your decision here, Pyro. Uh, Ezio's face looks terrible. I've got like a full... Ezio I, is freaky looking I've, I've in Soul I've got a full Calibre view 5. of it right now, and man, is it weird. Is there something wrong with, and like, his nose in proportion to his lips? Is the, the face in general is just messed up. It's clear that they just put that character together with a couple extra custom things on the character creation. Alright, so... And Ezio is normally really, really good looking. I don't think I mentioned it in my review, but one of the best things about Assassin's Creed Revelations is there was a scene in there, the which I literally... <laughs> 
was unable to determine if this cutscene was a pre-rendered computer graphics scene or full motion video. Like, I didn't, I still don't know which that was. I was like, wow, this is amazing. Also, you have the hot Serezio, probably. Well, probably. Yeah. Ezio's pretty hot. <laughs> He's, he's an Italian playboy. Anyway, you were saying... Pretty much automatic. All right. Um, the platforming is really good. The environment puzzles are really good. The combat is really good. And the story is very ridiculous in the way you'd expect it to be. Okay. So, do we have plans for what we'll be reviewing for next week? I have a couple ideas. Most of them revolve yeah. around trying to avoid playing Final Fantasy XIII, too. Yeah. Uh, so we could get... That, that thing I said about playing all of the Final Fantasies, that doesn't mean I enjoyed all of them. Um. Because I think the new... At least the, the thing we can say about... The pack is out, and so we could do that. Mm-hmm. At least... Did you play eleven and fourteen? I did. Well, I played eleven. I did not play fourteen because the every review for it that came out initially said this isn't because a 14 game. Fourteen is awful. Yeah, they they were like this isn't a game yet. <laughs> but I don't regard eleven and fourteens as actual Final Fantasies, so I'll give that a pass. Yeah, I'm I'm I, with you on that. Being being single player is a fairly core element of the series. Mm-hmm. You can't make an MMO and have it be the same thing. But yeah, I did play Eleven for a couple of years. Yeah, Sims Three Showtime yeah. is out. Okay, so we could review another Sims expansion, complete with the Katy Perry edition. I'm not getting the Katy Perry edition unless you buy it. Look the teller in the eye and then say, "I appreciate and admire her as a musical artist," because that can would I make u- it worth. Can I use I your money when I do this? <laughs> if I can use your money when I do it, I will totally do it for a laugh. Because that would be worth the price of admission right there, wouldn't it? Right? I'd have to record that. I respect my her as a musician and artist. <laughs> also, she wasn't allowed on Sesame Street because her boobs were too big. <laughs> and sprayed whipped cream Actually all over Big Bird. <laughs> <laughs> Spray whipped cream all over your Big Bird, baby. Oh, dear. <laughs> So no, I I will totally I will totally do that to pick up the copy of the game if it's your money. <laughs> I'm thinking about it, guys. <laughs> I will do that. <laughs> Cause that's pretty freaking tempting. So that's a possibility. Um, let's see what else is coming out next week. Um, doo, 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 doo. I don't think we have any movies coming out. Um, did anyone watch the the Super Bowl trailers? Cause supposedly there was like a brand new shiny trailer for. Avengers, I think. For the Avengers, that yeah, included I didn't watch the Super Bowl. I was at work. That included the the premiere of the Scrolls, right. and no one saw it. At least no one right. I know. Well, I wasn't watching the Super Bowl. I was at work. Right. A likely excuse. I wasn't watching the Super Bowl because I don't care about the Super However, Bowl. However, I would have liked to be watching this Puppy Bowl instead, but. Oh no! I just realized what does come out next week. So we, unfortunately, we won't be able to review it because it'll be out for like a day when we have the next nerd talk. Twisted Metal. I see. That's right, David Jaffe's new addition oh. to the series. <laughs> that, okay, that was a weird noise for that. Me. That is tempting. Is just titled Twisted yeah. Metal. No number, no, number, no subtitle. No nothing. The fact that it's the only one on the PS3, I think, is supposed to give it away which one it is. What is with you people and your obsession with numbers? We do also have the sequel well, to uh, The Darkness, which came out this uh, this past Tuesday. That's tempting. I will see if I can acquire a copy of that, because I played through the original and was just like, that was really good gameplay. Also, I picked up a... I bought a couple of the new um, Geek Sheet Cosmetics... Selling sense line, uh, but they have not shipped them because they ran out of supplies because it was kind of a explosive release, and so I was able to snatch a few that I will be reviewing whenever the heck I get them. Traces of Thetis is the name of the collection, and uh, so 
whenever I get those, you can expect a review from me on that. But okay, we've got w Darkness Two had a full page banner on the Steam store that pushed down the entire store page, and that's pretty common. But it is already near the very bottom of the top sellers list, which is not a good sign because mm -hmm. it is brand new. All right, I've got one more bit of news that we're going to do, and I've already linked it in chat so you guys can check it out. Because we haven't done anything miniature-based in quite a while, I, I think it's important that we mention this because, oh my god, it's huge news from Privateer. <laughs> I see what you did there. Like, ridiculously huge news. So there's a, a link to the article about the next War Machine expansion, which brings to the game for the very first time Colossals. So, Pix has yet to actually see this, and I think Pyro hasn't either. Cause, yeah. So basically, War Machine, the, the latest, ba the, the, up to this point, the, the newest release has been the Battle, Battle engines. engines, which were the biggest ones in the game. And of course, Cogor had the biggest among them that like didn't really fit on its base. It, yep. So now, in place of Battle better. Engines, we have the Colossals, which are giant warjacks that behave in a similar way to all the warjacks that are currently in the game. They, Except they're huge. They're given focus, they have power attacks, they have damage grids. These are just giant warjacks. And this one that they're teasing right at the start of the video is the Cotter one, the Conquest. Which I assume is spelled with a K. Yes, of course. So here's a side-by-side -side comparison coming up of the Conquest standing next to a destroyer. They're on the same base size as the battle engines. Yeah. Kador. That thing has to be pinned because I have no idea how it's standing up. <laughs> it's it's entirely made of resin. It's resin with uh, possibly some metal bits for the various barrels, things you would glue on. Mm -hmm. But yeah, tell me that isn't cool. That, it's freaking huge. That that has made me want Wait, to... We have, a lot, we have a zinger for that, don't we? We, 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 we do. do have, we don't have a system for zingers, but we do have a zinger for it. Yep. They are like Bowser from Ooh. Super Mario Galaxy. Friggin' huge. Friggin' huge. <laughs> so, hopefully that works. So yeah, I, chat, just have a look at this video for how crazy these miniatures are becoming. Like, a, a couple people were claiming that this is Privateer's attempt at getting the attention of the Warhammer 40k Games Workshop gamers. Because mm. Games Workshop has been, their solution to getting new gamers has been make something huge that they can't ignore. And now Privateer has done the same at, thing. At this scale, are they really miniatures anymore? No, that is that is larger than an average action figure at this point. That's probably the size of, like, your fist or something, isn't it? Um, that one is the size of an average fist. That one's twice as tall. The Cotter So Steam has announced a mods workshop. They have they released a in Steam store for store. They have free stuff. And I don't think they do have paid stuff, but they have mods for Obli or for Skyrim and for Team Fortress 2 so far. Sweet. But it looks like they're planning on rolling out mods to other games. Cool. Is exciting. Alright. User content on Steam. That, that's a great thing. I would like to see Steam promoting things like the Stanley Parable, you know. Things that deserve our attention. There's the Signar one. Those are really big. Those are ridiculously big. Let's see if I can pull up clips of the other ones. And, like, the only one of these I don't like is this Crix one, which we've got a clip of it in the background. Um, the Crix Kraken. Also known as the Squidicorn. For reasons you tried to explain to me. And I'm, I'm going to see if we can get to the part where they like show the... That's there. The, that's the Battle Engine. Yeah. There's a part of this video where they show the 3D composite rendering. And what this thing is, it's, it's effectively an upright tentacled squid that happens to have a giant unicorn horn cannon built into the front of it. Which sounds pretty stupid, right? Like that. <laughs> Squid with a cannon. Cannon squid. You're just skipping through all the parts where the developers are talking. Just like, yeah, I don't care. I've already seen this. Trust me, I, I was drooling when it came out. They have two damage grids. They're so big. 
So yeah, I think that'll do it for uh, for this nerd talk. There's the ret one because ret needs one too. Stupid elves. The elves. Stupid elves. It it's a big anime robot. Woo! Exactly what Brad wanted then. Woo! I think ret players are used to being embarrassed at this point. There's the building one. Yeah, there's the shots of them actually putting this thing together. <laughs> Trying to figure out just how big they can get away with making this thing. How to balance the stupid thing so it doesn't fall completely over. At least you know they bother with uh, quality assurance. Yeah, see, I told you it was pinned. Well, yeah, you're going to want to pin these. There, There is zero question about that. All right, so we will be back next week with more stuff. If you've got a suggestion you'd like to make for us, please leave it at nerdtalkshow.com. We've got convenient forums. You can send us messages through our Facebook or Twitter. Uh, my Twitter is nerd talk, uh, at nerdtalkpixie, or the Facebook URL is uh, facebook.com slash nerdtalk. Pardon our dust, though, because we are going to be prettifying it up over the course of this week. So, which will hopefully be ready by tomorrow. Yep. So, chatters, thank you for joining us. Um, Wacky, welcome to the show. Tall and underscores, of course. Welcome. Good to have you all. And, of course, uh, thank you for joining us on this fine Wednesday evening. Hi, are you got anything else to add for next week? Yup. Nope. All, all right. right. We will see you next Wednesday on February 15th, the post-Valentine's Day show. If any of us survive. Valentine's Day, the most lethal holiday on the calendar. Anyway. In the meantime, I'm Pixie. No, you're not. I'm Pyrosim. I'm Pixie. You're said. Good night. <laughs> Way to Morbo that one. You guys are jerks. Okay. Flack. F L A C. That was a pretty good show. I think it still felt pretty constructed and the same as we usually do, but it was pretty good. I sincerely don't give a fuck about League of Legends, even with more bots. I haven't played it since the new version. I'd like to get on and see what's happened. Have you seen, have you watched the feed dump for today? It has butt man in it. Whose name is spelled butt man with not the normal letters. Oh man, I really like this Soul Calibur music. I'm excited to have the opportunity to listen to some more of it. No. In addition to being $50, to get the CD you'd have to buy it on CD and have it imported from Japan. <laughs>